Well, good morning. It's time for your weekly kick. Some of the conversations I have with people are done in the workplace, some on the job site, but some of them are done over a cup of coffee. And that's what this morning is going to be. Just a simple talk over a, a cup of coffee. And uh, we're sitting in my backyard. But I want to talk about uh, something that I was reminded of in the last couple of weeks as a leader. As a leader, we're often given the impression that we need to rush into a job. We need to rush into a new situation. And we need to establish control quickly and be the one with all the solutions. After all, we're the leader. So shouldn't we be the one who's bringing all the solutions to the people that we're leading? Well, I was reminded that this is not always the case. And actually, usually shouldn't be the case. I read a, finished, just finished reading a book. It's uh, about the, a guy named Carlos Ghosn. He's the CEO who came in, who was brought in to basically save Nissan about 10 years ago, a little more than 10 years ago. Nissan was very close to being bankrupt. They were a powerhouse company for decades in the Japanese automaking world, and yet they were almost bankrupt. So Carlos came in, and as I read online at some of the booksellers, what they, how they review the book, you get a very different view than what the book actually says. Here's what they say online. Carlos came in and he was aggressive and he laid people off and he changed here and he changed this and he got rid of this system here and, and he made these changes. And it gives the impression that he was really basically a bulldozer. He came in, he had the solutions, he was the boss, he was the leader. And as I read the book that he either had a, I can't remember if it was an autobiography or if he actually just had a, a large part in what was said in the book, but the very the most important impression and, and thing that I learned from the book is he came in, he knew there were significant problems. And what he actually says is that he knew the solution would come from somewhere at an entry level position. It would come from among the employees. And so what he did is he spent initially weeks talking with employees for all the way from entry level, all the way up to top management to find out what the real issues were to see what was going on, what had been happening, and, and to get a bit of a grasp of how to approach the problem. And then what he did is he put teams together, ten, around eight to ten teams of eight to ten people on each team, and each team was charged with finding a solution to a specific problem and challenge in a specific area that the company was facing. And he gave them a deadline, three months, and then he was, he was on them. He uh, held them accountable. He, he pushed them when they needed to be pushed, but they came up with the solutions and then he implemented them. He helped uh, the people in charge of the company, the people who ran the company, the su all the way down to supervisors, um, foremen, to make these changes. And he brought the individual people from the floor of the manufacturing plants to the people who procured the parts in on it because they were a part of creating the solution. As leaders, when we approach things from the perspective that I have to have, that I have to have the solution because after all, I'm the leader. You know, I have the solution and you just need to follow me. It's always difficult. It is never as effective as when we bring people with us from the very beginning. Say, what do you think? What's the best approach we could take here? What are some of the solutions? And then we don't have to try to get what we call buy-in. That's the worst term. Um, we need to convince people to buy into our plan. Well, if it's not our plan as an individual leader, if it's our plan as a team or as a group or as a company, then it's not hard to get people on board because they're already there. It's their plan. They're a part of it. They're a part of the solution. So that's the challenge as a leader. Do we have to have all the solutions? No, we don't have all the solutions. Nobody's that smart. Nobody's that intuitive. Nobody's that bright. No one of us has all the solutions, but the people we have on our team will have the solutions and we need to be listening to them. We need to be seeking out what they are thinking, what they're seeing, what they're understanding because they will see the problems from a different perspective than we do. A good leader doesn't try to implement all their own solutions. They bring in their team to find the solutions because then you've already got a team around you who are going to be implementing the solutions. And that is one of the biggest challenges for any company is to actually implement the solutions and implement the things that we know that need to change instead of just talking about it. And that's where a good leader comes into play. He or she will help
people execute on the plan. Not just talk about it, because we can talk about a good plan forever. But a good leader, a strong leader, will help execute and help make sure that everybody's executing on the plan. So, that was your weekly kick. Hope you have a good week. We'll talk to you next Tuesday morning.